on the, on the streets. Make it happen. We can win these elections by outworking them. And it's actually good for the soul, too, to stop paying it. You know, I want to tell you, we ended this year on a positive note. You know, I think some of the pundits on television like to talk about the doom and gloom. Even on January 6th, remember, at the end of the day, while the glass was still broken, while the offices were desecrated, while Nancy Pelosi had been under attack of, of murder, she called us down to the floor of the House and said we will do our constitutional duty. We will certify the election of Joe Biden as President of the United States. At the end of the day, democracy won. Democracy won. And I want to tell you this, we have the lowest unemployment rate. People have more money in their pockets than they had even before the, uh, the, the pandemic. We are seeing small business um, ap applying for to, to open up 30%. There are a lot of good things about the economy that are happening. Gas prices are actually going down. We can win this election. And let's remember, as much as they may parade around, we won the House, we won the Senate, yeah. we won the presidency of the United States of America. They're losers, we're winners. <laughs> and the reason, the reason, the reason that we're going to continue to win is the work that you're doing today to make sure that our candidates get on the ballot, the work that we're going to do in voter registration to make sure that everyone uh, gets registered to vote, and then to get out to get them out to vote. And in the meantime, in Springfield and in Washington, we're going to continue to fight for all of the great legislation, the leadership of our governor, our lieutenant governor, who we're so proud is here today, to make things better for Americans. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, you're the heroes. You're going to put on uh, your, your coats and you're going to go out, but I'm telling you, there is a real satisfaction. It's good exercise, that's healthy, and it is good for our democracy and it's good for our mental health to make sure that we're going to win. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, it is not, I mean, I mean, I mean, yes? Okay. And next, it is so great to have our Lieutenant Governor, Juliana Stratton, who's been doing such a great, you had COVID too, right? I did. Me too. But I'm better. I got vaccinated and boosted and I'm open. Yeah, I had it too. You were vaxxed and boosted, yes. right? Yes, yes. Right, Thank God. Yeah, okay, so we're good. Um, we are so um, uncontagious. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually and hug, mask. Juliana. And mask. Yeah, okay, and mask, for sure. So Juliana, thanks so much for coming. It means so much to us. Thank you. So Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday and happy petition season kickoff. First and foremost, thank you so much. I have to thank Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky for all of her tremendous leadership in Washington. I want to thank Dean Maragos for your continued leadership as committee person, as well as Eamon Kelly for his leadership as well. And then I want to also acknowledge my incredible friends, sister friends I consider you to be, and my former colleagues in the Illinois General Assembly, Representative Jennifer Gunn Gershowitz, Representative Robin Gable, as well as Senator Lauren Fine. Thank you all. Can we give them a round of applause? Some tremendous leaders. So I am so excited to be here with all of you today. I too am excited about this season when we kick off going out, getting signatures, and making sure we talk to people all across our state about what's at stake in 2022. And I know that Evanston's, Evanston Township is always consistently one of the top five vote getting townships in all of Cook County. So it makes sense that I am right here making sure that I can come see all of you face to face and let you know how much I appreciate your hard work. You know, when JB and I ran in 2018, 
We said that we were gonna put Springfield back on the side of working families and that's exactly what we did. We have raised the minimum wage in Illinois. We have expanded healthcare to more Illinoisans. We have codified Roe v. Wade into state law and, and we have passed balanced budgets to put our state back on fiscal stability. This is all important and it could not have been done without all of you. And we've done it, by the way, in the midst of the greatest public health crisis of our lifetimes, making sure that we continue to do all we can to keep Illinoisans safe. So JB and I are gonna continue campaigning all around the state of Illinois. We're gonna crisscross this state and get to every community. And I have always told Illinoisans, we are going to do everything we can to lift up every community, and that's what we're doing, and we're doing it together. So now I'm excited. I hope everybody's ready. Can I get a little energy in there? Are we ready to go get some signatures? Let's do it. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. I'm Robin Gable, state representative. I just want to remind us all, we've heard about all the great things we've done, but we know that there's still so much more to do. And that's why we want to get back there and do it. So we know that we still need to get health care for all. We need to get a job for every person that's capable of working. And we need to make sure that we have a balanced budget and that we have safe communities. So we still have more to do. We've got um, I'm going to end with a quote from our, uh, our um, speaker. Winners do the work. <laughs> so we know that when we get out there and we do the work, that we're going to win. So thank you all so much. And I don't want you to be discouraged. We have lots more people coming in today and tomorrow. You're not by yourselves. We've got hundreds of people who are going to be going out and getting signatures. So thank you all so much, and let's get going. Thank you, thank you, thank you to our Springfield and Washington contingent. Give it up one more time for them. We have, uh, of course, a lot of work to do, as they were saying, in Washington, in Springfield, but here today. I don't know about y'all, but I'm gonna be posting on all the platforms and making all my friends very FOMO'd about the fact that they're not participating in democracy this morning. <laughs> Uh, and we have other folks who want to come up and speak as well. We can't forget about our judges, so let's uh, welcome them up, please. I want to start with Judge Rena Van Tine, but all you folks, come on up here. We want to hear from everybody today. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Judge Rena Marie Van Tine. I've served you for almost 21 years as an associate judge in Cook County. Um, on behalf of the entire circuit court slate, thank you. We have, I think, never seen a more diverse, highly qualified slate. The Democratic Party, including all our committeemen, uh, Committeeman Kelly, um, they took great pains to vet us. There were a number of people trying for these vacancies. They looked at the Bar Association ratings. Each and every one of us are highly qualified to, qualified to um, get this position. Uh, I want you to know that we're also working very, very hard on the petitions. Um, you don't, you don't, I don't need to tell you that it is more challenging now in the middle of the surge and the dead of winter to get petitions. Um, but the circuit court uh, candidates are also working very hard. Um, but we just want to thank you. Um, also, uh, my good friend here, Judge Sanjay Taylor, He's running in the ninth judicial sub-circuit. I'll let Sanjay tell you about uh, the boundaries. Thank you, Judge. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sanjay Taylor. I've been a judge for the last 19 years. I sat in five different divisions of the court, and now I'm head of one of the divisions called the County Division, where we hear the mental health, adoption, property tax, election cases, and a few other areas. The Bar Associations have found me highly qualified and highly recommended. Um, I thought I'd take a moment and just share with you a few war stories. I've been out, you know, quite a bit over the last two days. And um, I started out on Thursday morning at 7 a.m. at the Morris Avenue L stop on the, in the 49th Ward. 
And I'm telling you, they could not run away fast enough. So, so that was not you know, too inspiring. But you know, 20 signatures in about two hours. Uh, my wife, she kicked ass yesterday at the post office. 40 signatures in an hour and a half. So you know, don't forget the post office. Um, uh, the jewel, you know, the jewel on Howard and McCormick was pretty successful. Um, I've heard Thursday nights and Fridays are good days there. So um, thank you for your support. A lawyer came up to me and he recognized me and he said, Judge Taylor, I said, uh, hey, how you doing? And, and they said, uh, well, what are you doing? Don't you got people doing this for you? I was like, yeah, well, they, I do, but you know, I'm gonna be out here every day because you know, this retail politic is what wins elections. And I'm in it to win as everyone else is, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, Michael Lieber, uh, another slated candidate and uh, a highly qualified candidate. Sorry, I'll be very quick. I'm not a judge. I'm just running for a judge. Um, but I'm slated countywide, and I look forward to all your support. Um, I'm a big fan of Evanston and Skokie. My uh, husband used to be a school teacher or an administrator at John uh, Middleton in Skokie. So um, I, we now live in Andersonville, and uh, thanks for all your support. And thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Up and down the ballot, it's all important. Uh, and has anyone not knocked doors before? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> you know what's great? You and I, it's our first day. I'm loving it. So I'm just quickly going to go through. And while I'm going through these step-by-step -step instructions, let's make sure that we've all signed what we have here, that we have everything we need to hit the door after I'm done talking. Uh, and that includes coffee, folks. There's some nice pastries up here as well. But real quick, any registered voter who resides in the district can sign a petition, right? We know that. More than one person at the same address can sign a petition. Sign a petition does not obligate you to vote for that candidate. We're all wearing masks when we go to the doors, right? We want to make sure. I love Jennifer Von Gershowitz. This sticker is amazing. Hello, I'm vaccinated. Uh, we're masked, we're vaccinated, we're boosted, we're keeping everybody safe, but this is a vital part of the process, so we got to go through. Uh, only sign petitions for one political party for the for the same election. We're making sure we have ink. We have so many pens. Please, take a couple, just in case. Uh, don't circulate petitions for more than one political party. <laughs> like we would. Uh, you must be 18 years of age and a US citizen. Check. Uh, every signature, you gotta witness them all personally, of course, right? We gotta make sure we are witnessing everything. Can't take it into the house. Can't have the dog do it. Just people who are registered to vote at that address. Uh, do not number the sheets or sign at the bottom. Don't do that. And of course, do not sign at the bottom of the sheet until you're ready to have it notarized. Uh, each campaign will have a notary on call. We're gonna deal with that later. Uh, uh, speak to everyone individually about where these petitions are gonna come back to. We're gonna be here today. There's two shifts, this is one, two. Um, are we caffeinated? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. This is step one, folks. Let's go out there and get it. 